All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. The topic of tonight's discussion is going to be the flight control page on the Airbus 320 flight deck status display screen section there. So before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave comments down below, all that kind of good stuff. It just helps me keep this channel moving forward and hopefully keeps it fun, engaging, and exciting for everybody that's interested in watching out there. So thank you so much if you've done so already for me. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and bring up the slide that I've got for tonight's discussion. So as we as we mentioned, the, the flight control page here. So just in general, we can go to the flight control page at any point in time to figure out, you know, what exactly is happening with any one of these flight control surfaces that we have on our airplanes. So, you know, where are they at, you know, first of all, in their, their uh, region of travel, let's say. And, you know, this flight control page also, interestingly enough, tells us a little bit a little bit more additional data about some of the systems that tie in and power these flight controls that we might want to know. So we'll go ahead and first, you know, run through the page and I'll just talk about all the symbology and, you know, what everything means. We'll, we'll kind of circle back and there's a few extra little pieces of data that I wanted to share with you guys that you might not have noticed before. You might not have uh, understood what they were. So we'll go over those. And then the last thing we'll do is uh, we'll do a little Q&A session tonight um, from a question I had from a viewer that wrote in a few days ago. So uh, with that being said, we'll, we'll get started here. We'll, we'll just take it from the very top here. And one of the first things I wanted to call your attention to is just this, the, the G, the B, and the Y here. Now, of course, you, you probably guessed if you know much about the airplane, um, you know, we have three hydraulic systems on the plane that, that, you know, work together to power all the flight controls on the, on the aircraft. And of course, you know, it's designed in this way to have, you know, a real strong level of redundancy that, you know, if there ever was a degradation or a loss of any one of the hydraulic systems or even two of them, you can still fly the airplane. You can still have enough, you know, ability to control those flight controls and get yourself on the ground and, and uh, you know, save the day. Um, one really interesting thing to mention, though, is, a, is at a, a pause point here in the talk is that, you know, the Airbus is actually a bit unique. And this is this is different to my understanding of a lot of other aircraft that still come off the assembly lines today. So, like, even a lot of the Boeing airplanes and other manufacturer uh, makes that flown uh, Bombardier and Embraer. Um, there is, uh, generally speaking, there is some ways to still fly the airplane if you had a total hydraulic loss. And that was one interesting thing about the Airbus, like I said, is that um, you actually need some hydraulic pressure from one of these systems to still fly the airplane. It will not fly, unfortunately, without um, you know some hydraulic power. So just one interesting thing to point out and uh, leave you guys with some food for thought for that. But you know, of, of course, as you might have guessed, you know, everything is just, you know, designed to be hyper redundant and it, it would be such a, a, a rare circumstance that something like this would present itself. And I'm sure there's been a lot of, you know, attention and, you know, design thought process put into this. They designed it in this way and it's it, one of the world's safest aircraft. So I think, you know, the record stands for themselves. But just one thing that I wanted to make mention of uh, as we get started here. So you know, with that being said, I mean, you could pause the the presentation if you wanted to take a minute and look through all these things but just you could see you know what systems specifically power which flight control surface it's it's kind of interesting so like we said here that's just the, the g the b and the y what those all mean across the board here so down from there we have the speed brake section here this of course just tells us what those the the flat kind of looking board things are doing on the top of the wings i remember on the, the airbus the the spoilers uh, or the speed brakes are actually used for roll control in addition to you know, drag and, you know, spoiling the lift and all this kind of stuff. So you'll see these, the, the surfaces move around, you know, of course, if you move the, the flight control stick or if you, know, you manipulated the, the speed brake lever itself, you would see these little green arrows come out uh, just depending on where the flight control surface is specifically or how much deflection you had to, you know, put into it. But, you know, once again, this this slide or this photo was taken, we're up at cruise altitude, so there's absolutely nothing going on with the, the speed brake at this point in time. So we can just see that everything is stowed and normal. Uh, as uh, indicated here by the green and the lack of those arrows on top there. So uh, moving straight down from there, we see this section here that says ELAC and uh, SEC. Remember, this is the uh, these are our flight control computers. So there's these um, you know dedicated standalone computers that exist in the airplane to just you know make these movements and back each other up and interpret signals from all sorts of different um, you know sources. Let's say from pilot inputs to autopilot inputs and you know all all sorts of other things that. Um, you know, like we said, I mean, this is a fly-by-wire aircraft, so we'll make a, a, a control movement, let's say, and the signal goes into a computer and gets all processed and all sorts of magic happens underneath the hood, let's say, and then, and then the actual uh, motion or movement is translated out and hydraulic power out of that surface. So the, 
you know, just to, you know, without spending a whole lot of time on this, if you want more detail, you could go back to the, the section we did on the overhead panel. I actually talked a little bit more in depth about these computers a little bit, but just uh, ELAC, just elevator aileron control is what that stands for. And then SEC, the spoiler elevator control. Um, and just, you know, we have two ELACs, there's three SEC computers, and we can just see that, you know, they're all functioning normally. They're all in the green there. And this is, you know, what you would normally expect. Uh, out to the left and right there, respectfully, we just have the, the left and right ailerons, you know, where they're at uh, at their point, um, th at this point in time, you know, as far as their travel is concerned. And then, you know, once again, just, you know, we see the, the blue and the green system powers uh, both the left and the right ailerons there, and they're, they're uh, showing uh, normal indications at this point in time. Down from there, we have the, the pitch trim indication. So remember on the, the A320 and, you know, a lot of other modern aircraft, you know, this is certainly the, the kind of the standard for the, the design. We have this trimmable horizontal stabilizer. So remember, the whole stabilizer itself will move up and down depending on what we're doing with the trim. And the, the elevators are just the little, you know, flap tab looking things on the back that are actually moving uh, when you move the flight control stick, let's say. But the, the pitch trim, you know, we can control this with that wheel in the center of the pedestal. Um, or, you know, when, when the autopilot's on or the air, airplane is air, airborne, this is all happening automatically. But just, you know, that is what the pitch trim is, is exactly. And this is just telling us that at this point in time, we have 0.8 degrees uh, in the up direction. Um, down from there, you know, we have the indication of the rudder, you know, just what, what the rudder is doing. And, of course, uh, you know, we can see that the, the rudder and the, uh, the speed brakes, coming back to those real quick, are the only uh, surfaces that are, that are backed up by all three systems. So uh, interesting enough there, the, the rudder, of course, is uh, pretty important to us. And then out from the left and right, uh, we just have the, like I started to mention, the, the aileron, or excuse me, the elevator surfaces on the, uh, the horizontal stabilizer there. So just, you know, where they're at this point in time and, you know, which systems are powering those. And, you know, I, I mentioned too, but, you know, take, take one more chance to pause and take a look at this whole slide here and think about, you know, if you lost any one of these systems, let's say, by deductive reasoning, you could still see that, okay, yeah, I can still make a pitch movement, movement I can still make a roll, and I can still make a yaw, you know, with, with any, you know, combination of, um, you know, single loss, let's say. So just, uh, you know, kind of drives home that point that I wanted to make mention of about the, the redundancy on the airplane, just the way that it's designed there. So um, one other thing I wanted to tell you guys, too, is, you know, normally um, we will always come to this flight control page on the ground right after we've started the second engine. We'll do a flight control check. So actually, you know, the captain will take a turn to make his, you know, full movements, you know, from up, down, full left, full right. You know, we'll test the rudder as well. And the first officer will actually uh, repeat the same process with the ailerons and the elevators anyways. And just verifying that everything is moving as you know we're expecting it to and everything's functioning normally and this, you know, one little interesting thing if you've ever watched an airbus taxi out um you know you, you, you've probably noticed uh, you know at some point if you've been observant you know that the pilots are doing a flight control check and if you've ever wondered why they're doing two of them well that is the reason you know like i said that the captain and the first officer are both making their tests and their checks to make sure that their their side sticks are doing uh, you know essentially what they're supposed to be doing the flight controls of course are responding as we would expect so one thing to make mention of there, and then, you know, normally during uh, flight, you know, we're, we're barely ever coming to this page unless we suspected some sort of problem. So we just kind of come here, you know, as part of our once an hour diagnostic check just to make sure that everything's normal and everything's functioning as we're expecting it to as we progress in our flight. So just one interesting thing there. So like I said, I wanted to loop back real quick and just talk about a, a few little small minute things that uh, if you've ever wondered about it, um, it's just uh, kind of extra bonus stuff. You'd have to be really uh, paying super tight attention, you know, for the, the simming folks out there or anybody else that, you know, has maybe poked your head up into an Airbus flight deck. But, you know, one, one thing I wanted to point out on the aileron skill right here, right? So at this point in time, we're at cruise, we're flying around, the flaps and slats are retracted, of course, and we see the neutral indication as, as showing right here. And this is, you know, exactly, you know, what we'd expect. But, you know, when you're taxiing out and you have the, the uh, flaps and slats of anything, uh, you know, one or greater, remember that the ailerons actually droop on the Airbus five degrees when we've got the flaps and slats out. So they actually have this little extra tick mark here that, you know, when you're on the ground, um, the, this little green like neutral arrow will actually you know, be down here to line up with the little five degree down tick. Um, so just one really interesting thing that I wanted to point out, I, I always thought it's neat, you know, Airbus, they, they've, 
you know, they're really good at, you know, removing and decluttering indications and screens if they think there's something that you don't, you know, need to, you know, see at a point in time, uh, you know, depending on where the airplane's at and what it's doing. But, you know, in other really strange, you know, circumstances or times, they've decided to leave like other tick marks. So, you know, right now, you know, once again, the flaps and slats are all retracted, uh, but they still leave us with this tick mark here that just, you know, indicates that five degrees down for whatever reason. So, just a real small little detail to point out. And one other thing I wanted to, to make mention of um, on the rudder here, this is actually one of the, the you know, probably the most important uh, safeties or systems that we have uh, with regard to the rudder anyways, is these little green tick marks in this area here. This is actually showing us um, where the rudder travel limiter will allow the rudder to go to. So, you know, think about when you, you take an airplane up in the area, you get it going really fast. Um, there's a tremendous amount of airflow going over that tail there. So if you were allowed to, you know, put a, a full input uh, in, let's say, with the rudder pedal and the, and the computer allowed you to move that surface, you know, let's say to the extreme, you know, left or right, you'd be putting a tremendous amount of load on that rudder back there. And, you know, there, there's actually been aircraft, uh, Airbuses even, unfortunately, that have actually had the, the tail like snap off completely as a result of these aerodynamic forces. So there's actually, you know, a safety, like I said, like built into the system that as the aircraft picks up speed, this rudder travel limiter progressively, like, you know, kind of narrows down this range of motion that it would actually allow you to put in as far as your, your flight control input in there is, is concerned. So uh, just, you know, one, one little extra thing to, to throw in there for you guys I, I thought was kind of interesting. So that pretty much wraps up everything I had to mention about the flight control page there. If you have questions, by all means, leave them down in the comment section down below there, and I'll, I'll do my best to field them for you guys. So uh, with that being said, I'll go ahead and move on to the, the Q&A section that I've got queued up for tonight. So let me, uh, let me pull up the question here from the, the last uh, the viewer that had wrote in. So uh, a viewer by the screen name of HZ. So uh, HZ, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. I really appreciate you. Uh, you doing that and leaving a comment for me. Uh, so HC, uh, he has a question here. Um, this, this was back a few slides ago. We were talking about the um, the uh, the door and oxygen page, and he had, he had a question about the the cabin vertical speed. So specifically, he says, uh, is there a limit regarding the cabin vertical speed during climb and descent, and what is the average cabin vertical speed? Um, very good question. This is a you know a really you know fine detail. Uh, just to recap a little bit, um, you know the the cabin vertical speed is actually regulated so that it climbs at a, a specified rate, let's say for passenger comfort. You know, remember we can you know climb or descend the airplane very fast, but if you were allowing the airplane to change its pressurization uh, at that same rate, this would be like you know potentially damaging and very painful for the human ears uh, that are existing inside the the cabin there. Uh, so, you know, first of all, you know, that that's, you know, specifically he's asking about this, the cabin vertical speed, you know, what are the limits? And, you know, I, I had responded to his comment, you know, down below and I went into the, um, the book and uh, I pulled out the, the specific data. So it's, it's interesting when the airplane's climbing, uh, the book actually doesn't, it doesn't list a specific like top um, number, let's say for a cabin vertical speed that's allowed. It just says that there's a logarithmic cal calculation that, you know, the airplane's looking at, you know, um, you know, just for a given cabin vertical, or oh, excuse me, the aircraft's actual vertical speed, it'll modulate and kind of take a, a look at that and only allow, you know, for a partial amount of that increase uh, you know, of vertical speed of the cabin pressure, let's say. And, you know, remember, you know, the, 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 the vertical speed of the airplane can be varying quite greatly depending on, you know, if we're flying through turbulence or, you know, how fast we're climbing, are we in like a full power climb, are we trying to do like a nice gentle climb up? So it, if you think about it, it's altering all the time, but these cabin pressure controllers are always, you know, kind of looking at things and trying to smooth things over and keep it all nice and, like we said, comfortable for the passengers on the inside. So, like I said, the, the book interestingly does not list a top limit for the, the climbing vertical speed. And if I looked through a ton of the documentation, I even talked to um, the guy I was flying with today. He's been on the airplane for like 25 years. And, and even he said, he's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I can't remember like specifically a number, but we both had a discussion about, you know, what, what sorts of average rates you would see in a climb. And it seems to be, to, you know, between about 500 and 1500 feet per minute uh, when you're climbing. So uh, that's the best answer I could come up with that one or for that one HC. Uh, but with the, the descent, it actually does list a 750 foot per minute uh, descent rate um, as the, the maximum allowable uh, rate of change, let's say, uh, in the cabin there. So 
hopefully that answers the, the question as specifically as possible. And one other bonus thing I wanted to, to kind of show you guys and, and make mention of is it's very interesting. I mean, with the Airbus as advanced as it is, um, this is a little data field that probably not a lot of folks that, that really even fly the plane pay much attention to. It's just kind of out of sight, out of mind. It's not super important to us, you know, when we're we're out there flying. But the box actually will tell you, um, you know, here we are on the cruise page, and it's telling us a couple things. I mean, we won't go through everything here, but you know, at the top of descent, you know, when the airplane's planning this nice, you know, the the, the descent all the way down to the runway, essentially. Um, it's projecting a, a, a descent rate in the cabin of 350 feet per minute if you were to stay on that box planned descent profile, if that makes sense. So just one real like interesting thing to, to add on top there that you know most people wouldn't have even thought of this. And uh, it's just, like I said, it's something that's you know not at the forefront of a lot of folks' minds that are out there flying the thing, but just something that I wanted to show you guys and, and make mention of. So... Uh, that's pretty much all I've got for everybody today. If you have any questions about anything uh, about the Airbus or about flying in general, I'd be more than happy to hear from you and hopefully field those questions. So until the next time, I hope everybody is staying healthy out there. Have a great night, and we'll talk again real soon.